Why don't white people form posies and administer vigilante justice on invader communities that have infiltrated and despoiled their white nations? The answer rests on two fundamental pillars of social organization in the late stage white nation. One, whites of Northwest European extraction have been overbred by evolutionary forces into passive, placid house pets who wouldn't survive a day without a paternalistic owner to provide their comforts, and for whom every stranger, no matter how threatening, is a friend deserving tail wags and hand licks. Two, the global homo-captured leaders and representatives of white nations won't defend whites from rapacious foreign and domestic enemies, and worse, actively punish organic local defenses that nationalistic, self-preserving whites may coordinate in their defense. Pillar number two is overlooked by those disposed to biocultural explanations for civilizational decline. Corn and porn can account for a lot of white passivity in the face of existential demographic threat, but an equally pernicious factor is the collusion of the white ruling class with the global homoists pushing a one-world, race-slurry dystopia that benefits no one but oligarchs in their fortified bunkers, deepening their ties with the deep state. The white man's worst enemy are his democratically elected leaders, who sold their souls to the globalist agenda and now control the full might of the state to crush any local resistance to the forced construction of a mass market bazaar society greased by enormous waves of third world immigration. White men don't form posies because they're enervated, and because they know by now that those leaders in whom they have placed their trust and stewardship would crush absolutely any show of lethal defiance to their state sanctioned dispossession. It is called posi interruptus, and it isn't so much evidence of the impotence of masculinity as our girl world evangelists would have you believe, as it is the growing reality dawning on so many white men that their nations have been occupied by enemies within whose first and last order of business is enforcing the restraining order against white masculinity. You can tell a lot about which rebellious faction an entrenched, decadent enemy fears most by how it apportions its energies and considerable resources. The globalist elite shrug off routine Muslim terrorist attacks and non-white dysfunction while hammering into submission with every weapon they have on hand, short of hot lead, any insurgency by white men against the global homo status quo that aims to turn white homelands into Blade Runner-esque nightmare visions. Contra the agitprop of globalist emasculates, the most potent force in the world isn't diversity, it's white men evicted from their own homes, awakened to the traitorous boot on their necks and hungry for vengeance.